This is the third major watch in the Moser Streamliner collection, and it's my favorite one yet. I've reviewed the time-only center seconds in Matrix Green, and I've reviewed the blue Streamliner flyback. And then just this summer, Moser announced this, the Streamliner Perpetual Calendar. All the Streamliners are different from other watches with similar complications, but this Perpetual Calendar is probably the most extraordinary, in the literal meaning of that word. Before I start opining about this watch, let me lay out some of the facts. This is a Perpetual Calendar watch. This means that when properly set and kept running, the watch will display at least the correct date for decades. No need to advance it at the end of the month, even in February, even in a leap year. Perpetuals do all the work for you. The steel case is 42 millimeters across and 13 millimeters thick from the case back to the top of the domed crystal. The case itself is actually around 11 millimeters thick. As for the length, the case is only about 40 millimeters long since there really aren't any lugs. The watch comes on a steel integrated bracelet. With all the links in, the watch weighs about 160 grams. It has 120 meters of water resistance. The Streamliner Perpetual has a list price of 54,900 US dollars. That is many dollars. The design of the Streamliner Perpetual calendar is just like the center seconds and the flyback. At a broad level, it's very natural and organic looking. There are no straight lines on the case or the bracelet. Everything is curved and sweeping and flowing. The case sides are reminiscent of an oyster shell or a clam shell. They're polished on the upper and lower bevels and brushed in the center. The top of the case is brushed radially out and down along its curves. The bracelet is serpentine. It's very snake-like in my opinion. It moves like one, and even on the wrist it looks like it's made of scales as you rotate your wrist in certain light. It's pretty neat. There is no modern watch that looks like this, and that's something to be appreciated. I think many watch nerds like me have at one time tried to design a watch themselves. How hard could it be, right? The answer is two. Too hard. So to see something authentic and new, that's something to be admired even if you don't like it. But I do like it. And that's just the bracelet and case. What's going on under the domed and beveled crystal is also on another polarizing level. So what is going on here? I see a date at 4 o'clock, okay. And what's that at 10 o'clock? A power reserve indicator? And what the f- Is that a tiny hand on the central axis? Yes, date at 4 o'clock. Yes, a power reserve indicator at 10 o'clock. And the tiny hand on the central axis? That's the month indicator. What a nice coincidence that there are 12 months in the year and 12 hours and one half of the day. With that little baby hand pointing at 10 o'clock, we know that it's the 10th month of the year, October. And with the Moser logo being almost imperceptibly etched on the dial, this has to be one of the cleanest perpetual calendar layouts I've ever seen. As a comparison, here are some traditional perpetual layouts from Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantin, IWC. Get it? The Moser Perpetual has some clever layout, but also doesn't have a moon phase indicator or a day of the week indicator. And instead of putting the leap year indicator on the dial, it's on the back as part of the movement. This makes a lot of sense to me. Do you really need a year indicator in your face every day? If you do, maybe you should lay off grandpa's old cough medicine, huh? As to the four o'clock date, I like it. There's an interesting principle in layout design. In cultures where the dominant language is read left to right, top to bottom, the human eye most often concludes at the bottom right. This is where the visual weight of a good design should be, and this is where you find the date window on this watch. And after a few days of wearing this watch, three o'clock dates now seem wrong to me. It's a strange thing. Like with other streamliners, the hands use Moser's Globalite loom that's applied and extends beyond their metal frames. And interestingly, the date is also loomed, though maybe not generously enough. The engine powering this flying saucer is the HMC-812. It's a special thing. All perpetual calendar movements are cool, but this one is ice cold. The HMC-812 is manually wound, ticks 5 times per second, or at 2.5 Hz, and has a power reserve of 168 hours, which, uh, pi r squared, 42 is seven days. 
A seven day power reserve, that's huge and kind of needed on a manually wound perpetual calendar. If you want to keep this running, and you do, it's going to need to store a lot of energy. The movement also uses a free sprung balance and, like many Moser movements, has a modular escapement, meaning the whole escapement system can be easily replaced during service if needed. Not only is the watch easy to read for a perpetual calendar, it's relatively easy to set. The crown is used for setting the date and rotating through the month. A huge bonus is that you can move the date forward and backward depending on how you turn the crown. The only other setting is done through a hidden pusher on the side of the case at 10 o'clock. That adjusts the leap year. On my 7 inch wrist, the Streamliner Perpetual wear is great. With 160 grams of mass, it has some heft, which I like. And because it has no lugs, it wears smaller lengthwise than nearly anything else 42 millimeters wide. You can definitely wear this on wrists much smaller than my 18 centimeter wrist. All the way down to 14 centimeters, probably. That's five and a half inches. It feels good, but maybe possibly more importantly, I like how this looks. Sporty luxury, really and sincerely. With 120 meters of water resistance, you can do a lot with this watch. I probably wouldn't do much more than swim with it, but that's a lot more than you can say for many other high horology steel sport watches. As for competition, the watch that comes to mind is the Bulgari Octofinissimo Perpetual Calendar. I know, I know, stylistically these watches couldn't be more different. The Octo is architectural and sharp, the Moser is organic and smooth. But what they have in common is that they're pleasantly different from traditional perpetual calendars. And with the Octo being $59,000 and the Moser being fifty-five, dollars these two are pretty close in price. And between the two, I'd choose this. I'm not saying it's better in some objective way, I just like it more. I like that the Moser has 120 meters of water resistance. I like the deceptive simplicity of the dial. You might never know it's a perpetual calendar, it's so clean. And I really like the fluid, original design of the Streamliner watches. Moser is trying something new and I'm into it. A new way of experiencing a perpetual calendar and a new look for luxury sport watches. Yeah, this watch is too expensive for many of us and maybe that bothers you, but I don't have a problem with that. I'm glad this watch exists. It's as if an alien spacecraft landed on my wrist, shiny, aerodynamic, and sleek, and bringing with it a challenge to traditional watch design. And I, for one, welcome our new alien overlords. Thank you.